Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Doris, and today I'm sharing with you about the market update and also stories of my stock account. So I bought 300 shares of SKUQ today, and the loss in my stock account was 1,726, and now my total asset is $99,650. One reason for market weakness: corporate moratorium on repurchases begins. And I'll be talking about detailed analysis of the core PCE in November and the Inflation Expectation Index in the Consumer Confidence Index in December in the United States. Lastly, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is no longer selling stocks. So first, regarding my account, today I bought in 300 extra shares of SQQQ and I lost 1,266.57 in total and that's a negative 0.55%. For the primary indexes of the market, the Dow Jones rose 176.44 points as a close, or 0.53% at $33,203.93, and the Nasdaq Composite rose 21.74 points, or 0.21% to $10,497.86. And the S&P 500 rose 22.43 points, or 0.59%, to $3,844.82. We can see that the market as a whole rose a little bit, and two particular industries that declined were biotechnology and, and auto manufacturers. At the same time, the oil and gas Natural resources industry rose 2.66%. This week in general, the Dow Jones rose 0.86% and the S&P 500 fell 0.19% and the Nasdaq Composite fell 1.94%. So far in December, the S&P 500 has fallen by 5.77%, while the Dow and the Nasdaq have fallen by 4% and 8.46% respectively. All three major indexes were headed for their biggest monthly losses since September. In addition, U.S. stocks are on track for their worst annual performance since 2008. Data shows that the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, PCE, in the United States in November rose 4.7% year-on-year, slightly higher than market expectations. Economists surveyed on average expected index to grow by 4.6%, the index rose 0.2% month on month, in line with expectations. The December University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index was 59.7, better than expected. Market expectations were 59.1. The November figure was 56.8. Consumer Confidence Survey Director Joanne Su noted that inflation expectations have improved, with consumers now expecting price to rise 4.4%, compared with 4.9% in the November survey. Goldman Sachs said Monday marked the start of the last lockout period for buybacks this year, with about 33% of companies currently in lockup, and that the number soaring to 54% by Friday. Although the lockout period has been announced a long time ago, more and more news about the voluntary suspension of stock repurchase has made the market worry. These news often contain more pessimistic expectations for the future. For example, both Micron and CarMax have announced that they are suspending share buybacks amid the difficult macro environment, and the Micron has also cut capital expenditures. According to media statistics, about half of the S&P 500 listed companies have reduced or stopped buybacks in the past quarter. Some market analysts believe that these companies' suspension of stock repurchases means that they are completely different from the confidence shown by the listed companies earlier this year, because at that time, these companies were free to repurchase their own stocks and invest in capital expenditures. The move sent a warning signal for growing across the economy and suggested that a key support for stock price, share buybacks, may be fading. The market is still paying attention to the Fed's monetary policy outlook. 
Some analysts believe that the exacerbation of the liquidity crisis will force the Federal Reserve to end its balance sheet reduction earlier next year. Fed watchers estimate that it is highly likely that the Fed will have to halt some form of current reduction in Treasury and the mortgage-backed securities (MBS) holdings next year, as illiquidity in the financial sector may already be building. A gap that could threaten the Europe Central Bank has control over its overnight rate target, which is why it may have to react. Joseph Wang, chief investment officer at Monetary Macro, believes that the process, most commonly known as quantitative tightening (QT), will change in the third quarter of 2023. When that shift comes. It could be due deteriorating liquidity in the treasury market or a sustained decline in bank reserves. Analysts at Nomura Securities predicted that the Federal Reserve will end its balance sheet reduction in September next year. The Fed is likely to reduce its balance sheet to about seven trillion dollars, well above pre-pandemic levels. Talking about Tesla today. Tesla closed down 1.76 percent on Friday, after the stock plunging 8.88 percent on Thursday. Elon Musk responded that the U.S. economy will fall into a severe recession in 2023. Demand will decline, and he will not sell Tesla shares until 2025. He also stressed that under no circumstances would he sell Tesla stock in 2023, and stuck to his pre. And stuck to his prediction that in the long run, Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. Thank you for listening. That's all I have for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.